5,000 years ago, a stone tablet had Egyptian hieroglyphics carved on it. These hieroglyphics explained how the first pharaoh, Narmer, had successfully unified northern and southern Egypt. Many consider this to be the first historic document. The practice of writing hieroglyphics on stone for announcing the achievements of the pharaohs continued for over 3,000 years. However, with the conquest of Egypt and the following rule of the Greeks, within 500 years, the practice stopped and hieroglyphics became a dead language. In 1799, Napoleon's army was in Egypt. A stone was found. It was one of these announcements of the achievements of a pharaoh, in this case, Ptolemy V from 200 BC. It also had Greek written on it, kind of like the instructions on consumer products we have today that are multilingual. This stone was quickly recognized as the key to understanding Egyptian hieroglyphics that had been inscrutable for over 1400 years. Over 20 years and great effort, hieroglyphics were essentially decoded. An archive of over 3,500 years of historic announcements was now uh, understandable again. You may be wondering what this ancient history has to do with modern electronic information technology. So I'll pick a more current example. In 1966, NASA began the Lunar Orbiter Program, where five lunar orbiters were launched in order to image the moon at close range at high resolution for the upcoming manned landings. The photos were first taken with the highest resolution medium available at the time, which was film, and it was actually processed automatically on the orbiters, then scanned electronically, and sent by radio relay back to receive receiving stations on Earth. Those stations then recorded this analog data transmission to two-inch quadruplex analog videotape, which was used to time shift live television shows for different time zones. Once the Apollo mission was over, the tapes were set aside, essentially forgotten. By 1975, the two-inch videotape had become obsolete with no immediate replacement. By 1986, a Jet Propulsion Labs archivist named Nancy Evans inherited these and hung on to them. She was convinced that they were the highest quality source data available and that this data was so hard won it couldn't be thrown it out. These tapes were hastily recorded inconsistently for different stations and for different recordings and they really weren't thinking about long-term reuse of them. It was considered a short-term recording just for the purpose of the Apollo program. So by the time Nancy Evans got to trying to demodulate the signal and view the images, it appeared most of the data was lost or at least unintelligible. Most people did not know how to operate these obsolete tape machines and decades were spent assembling a team who understood the technology that was used back when it was recorded in 1966. By 2008, the 1500 tapes had left Nancy Evans' garage and were placed in a abandoned McDonald's where this team would work to decode and digitize the entire archive. McMoons became mission control for the Lunar Orbiter Image Recovery Project, which completed in 2014. Now, all the lunar orbiter images from the 60s can be viewed at resolutions thought impossible when they were first taken in the 60s. So in this case, the obsolescence of the videotape machines caused a gap of over a generation where this important data was lost. Similarly, the death of Egyptian hieroglyphics caused a gap of 1,500 years where we could no longer read Egyptian hieroglyphics. It seems like obsolescence of a technology or language is an important consideration if you want a long-lived archive. Because of this challenge, a model was devised by national space agencies that knew they didn't want to make the same mistake that NASA had, where they had invested a huge portion of their GDP to collect operational and scientific data only to have it lost in less than a generation. This standard's called the Open Archive Information System. National archives and scholarly journals uh, the world over, such as JSTOR, the National Archives and Records Administration, the Library of Congress, the British Library, all adhere to this standard to avoid the same problems. An enterprise information archiving product known as InfoArchive is the only commercial out-of-the-box solution that is based on this standard. How long can your organization archive data?